Michigan State 37, Michigan 33. It would it would be criminal to not lead off with this game because it was the best game of Saturday. Michigan had a 70% uh, post-game win expectancy in this game, but they settled for four field goals. Michigan State turned the ball over two times early, and Michigan turned the ball over two times late. This was uh, an interesting. The tale of the game, of course, Michigan State was a four-point underdog. Michigan State won drive points, and for those that are unaware, that is 60-plus yard drives. They won those 30-14. to 14. They won rushing yards, 199-146. to 146. They had no fourth down failures. Michigan had two, so those are effectively turnovers. Michigan won yardage in this game, Chris, 552 to 395. They won yards per play, 6.7 to 6. And Michigan won third downs, 47% to 31%. But again, had to settle for four field goals. Uh, that's that's going to cost you at some point when you get into tight ball games. This was a magnificent football game. The, the star players showed out. It was everything that you could hope that it would be. Andrell Anthony. I, a little bit of a coming out party, a little bit. I mean, he was speed demon on that first touchdown for Michigan. And when that play first happened, my thought process was, I have bet on the wrong horse because I did not think that Michigan had that kind of speed. And and he is an absolute playmaker. But all in all, I think you and I both liked Michigan State in this game. The home crowd was amazing. The atmosphere before the game was nuts. Hey, did you see the difference between like the Barstool live crowd and ESPN's live crowd? Oh, just just banger, banger, loved it. All in all, like, give me your thoughts here. This was a a fabulous football game, man. Great football game is exactly what I kind of thought it was. A little bit more scoring than I was expecting, but oh, yeah. a back and forth game, super tight the entire way. Every time Michigan pulled out within two scores, Michigan State found a way to always bring it back. I thought that was pretty impressive. I think both these teams are really good, by the way. I don't I don't think this is a knock or a fall. Like everybody's killing Harbaugh this morning. And and I'm thinking, did, did anybody in the country think that this team was going to be six and one this week? Are they are they six? I think they're no, they're seven and one. Seven, seven and one. one. No, nobody so, believed they'd but, be seven and zero oh coming into this ballgame. Nobody, nobody thought by by week eight, nobody thought Michigan would be seven and one. Okay, so the idea that this is this is where it bothers me. We have this perception of these teams before the season starts and then teams do something unbelievable. And we've changed our perspective so much that as soon as they fall, we forget what we thought they were beforehand and we hold them to this new standard. The same thing with with Arkansas, who didn't play this weekend. Everyone keeps calling them frauds. Arkansas was picked to win four games this year. All right. Like, how in the hell are they frauds because they lost three in a row? We thought they would lose, like, eight in a row. But what? they were all to ranked teams. Like, this is – Michigan went on the road yes. to a ranked team. A top ten team. And and lost at the last second. Yes. And so, we, we throw up Harbaugh's record against top ten teams. And we throw up his record against – like, how many of those top ten teams were Ohio State when they were one, two, or three in the country? Because sure. I think that most of them are that team. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, well, a lot right. of them are Michigan State as well, and that's part of the issue here. No, because, no, they're like, not because Michigan State has beat them, but Michigan State hasn't been a top ten team. Right, right, right. Since no, this game. Agreed. So what I'm talking about is top ten record where everybody's shitting on him. So after the, the game was hold over, on. With. the top ten record would be some of them Wisconsin, uh, sometimes Penn State, sometimes Ohio State. And always Ohio State. Yeah, always Ohio, State. Ohio yeah. State. So if you take all the Ohio State and, games out, because we acknowledge the fact that Ohio State is far superior than them, half of that number, that number gets cut in half. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Then, then we can all shut up. That's it. I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Uh, I don't think Michigan did anything. If you want to start pointing out Harbaugh being a choker and whatnot, you could, you could find things in that fourth quarter to point that direction. However, the, the the only thing that they had struggles with at the fourth quarter were turnovers. If if what's his if the freshman quarterback coming in, if if Harbaugh doesn't make that move to try to get a little bit of a run dynamic from the quarterback position in, and that kid doesn't fumble the ball two times, like all right, you can kill Harbaugh for that because he shouldn't have put that guy in. 
But at some point in time, when is that guy's not supposed to just drop the football? Because he didn't he didn't have the ball stripped from him. He didn't have the ball taken away from him. He just dropped it both times. Yeah. No, you're you're not wrong so about that. So it's not like they they didn't coach him up well or whatever. That guy's just not prepared for that moment. And okay, so maybe you shouldn't have put him in that moment. That's a coaching decision. I understand that. I'm not defending him, the guy. I, I well, I guess I am defending him because I think both of these teams have so overperformed what we thought they would be this year. And and so whoever lost this game, we were going to spend the day killing them. And I just don't understand that. I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't believe anybody deserved to be killed over this game. Uh, no, it's this, a fantastic game, and somebody has to lose. Yes. No, you're 100% right. Uh, Michigan, where it cost them, I think, was so early on, they get the interception from Peyton Thorne, and they are at the 30-yard line and uh, of Michigan State. They drive it all the way to the eight, fourth, and three. They have to kick a 26-yard field goal. Same thing the next time out. They they are t- up 10 to seven, excuse me, and they're driving. They drive all the way down to the Michigan State 20. It's fourth and two at the 20. They have to kick a 38-yard field goal. Like, in situations like this, you yeah. kind of have to play to win yeah. in a game where you know the other no, team is going to hit back at some point, right? I, I would have I would have rather gone for it and not gotten the points but yes. had Michigan State pinned back in the, you know, the 10-yard line than getting the three multiple yes. times. But but that's the way I I see the game. That's the way I like to play football, especially when you have a good defense that's doing a really good job overall for the most part. Make them drive at 90 95 yards if you don't I, the three points ain't going to help you. You know no, what I'm you're, saying? You're right. You're right. Hey, Kenneth Walker the third. by the way, uh, Larry Pilgrim jumped in and said, Kenneth Walker, enough said. Uh, yeah. Kenneth Walker the third, 23 carries, 197 yards, five touchdowns. He had yeah. all the touchdowns. I mean, just ridiculous how, how well he performed in this game. It was absolutely killer. He had more rushing yards than Peyton Thorne had passing yards, yep. and that's awesome. Uh, Eric yep. jumped in. He said, uh, Michigan and Ohio State coaches that can't win that matchup don't keep their jobs. And he ain't wrong. That's just not true. That, no, that's, that's just not true. Harbaugh's not getting fired for losing this game. No, no, uh, agreed. In, in the past, he's talking historically. Historically, okay. they don't okay. keep their jobs if they don't beat the other team. So John do we, Cooper so do was we like think that. Harbaugh's going to get fired this year? Let's say Harbaugh loses Penn State and Ohio State. You think Harbaugh gets fired? No, I don't believe Harbaugh gets okay. fired at this point because he is well overperformed what they were supposed to be this year. I Ex- think he's, exactly. he's got exactly. them headed so in the right direction. That statement brings no value, all right? Uh, yeah, okay. So that's uh, he's he's talking from a historical perspective, and I get where he's coming from. But I, I don't think this situation is similar because Ohio State has never been – this, like what they are right now, they are a juggernaut and one of only three or four in this sport right now to compare Michigan Ohio to State? that. Ohio State is, yeah. This year? No, just overall as a program. Like, not not this team this year, just overall as a program. Why are we talking about Ohio State right now? Uh, because of the, you. Okay, you have a valid point there. Let's jump off that. Uh, Haskins only had 59 yards rushing. Corum only had 45. They Michigan State kind of shut them down a little bit, and that was... Yeah, I, I say shut them down. They still had 500 and whatever yards. But when they needed to, they stopped them. It was a bend-don't-break yeah, defense. It was, it was, it was perfect. a perfect bend-but-don't-break defense by Mel Tucker. It was uh, a perfect bend-but-don't-break defense by Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker, you, you want to talk about stocks going through the roof? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that his agent may have gotten a few calls from Baton Rouge yesterday. Uh, we'll just say that. So yep. I, don't, uh, I don't know that that is going to happen, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.